You are listening to episode 11 of the Industrial Tradition podcast. Today we are talking with Matt Morris of Morris Storage Solutions. So he owns that business. He also is a pastor of a church, a husband, a dad. Um, Today we mostly talk about um, small business, small family businesses. So I hope you guys enjoy. We believe that ordinary people's stories are the ones that need to be told. We want to meet you in the trenches of everyday life and say, me too. Pipeline families, farmers, ranchers, makers, mothers, mechanics, truckers, welders, and alike are all welcome here. Industrial Tradition is a brand dedicated to celebrating you and the way you live life. I'm Kayla, creator of Industrial Tradition and your host. I love that our community is filled full of people with tough roots and wild dreams. This is our community kitchen table. Show up here to talk shop, tell soul-filled stories, share your best advice, and shake hands with folks living on hard work and faith, just like you. Hey, Matt. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's good to be here. Good. Thank you so much for coming. So I have to ask, uh, for those on YouTube, they'll be able to see you. Where, where are you doing this interview today? Um, I'm doing it in my dining room slash office at my table slash desk. Love that. <laughs> a, small, a small business deal, I think. I think so too. You know, our house has become essentially a warehouse and my office is part of that. And instead of living room table, we have a shipping table. So we can totally relate on that. Yeah. Well, um, I can't really show everybody, but if you can see, um, my my table here which it isn't our dining room table it's behind me but i've got just a folding table Mm -hmm. um and it is piled up up to up to here with the stuff (laughs) the printer and uh behind me you can see my microwave behind me Uh and then beside that is a filing cabinet and um uh yeah this is just yeah where it starts i think of that picture that i see of the founder of amazon Uh uh-huh uh that old desk that he has and uh, it seemed to work out pretty well for him so I'm not too discouraged right I think I get like super you know sometimes I'm just like wondering like am I doing enough like is this business thing gonna work out you know there's all those things but you're totally right like some of the greatest things greatest minds and businesses in the world like started in basements and garages and yeah. probably dining room tables and all of those things so I love that so much. I mean, all of my favorite businesses definitely started that way. So I love it. Um, So you do, you have a shop and we'll jump into that, but you do work out of your home for like all the administrative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All the, everything that has to be done on the computer or anything is at home because I haven't got my office set up over there. um, And it's been three years now. So, um, uh, but uh, yeah, I do have a shop that we do all of our the actual the production and work right. out of. Right. And how long have you, did you get that shop right whenever you started or did you also start that part of it at your house to begin with? Okay. Um, well, here's, okay. So our business, um, my, I'm fourth generation. Okay? okay. But my dad, my dad quit. Um, I'm 27 now. He quit when I was 16 and went and worked in the oil field down the Gulf coast building tanks. And, uh, and so, and so in that time period, there was several different businesses that came in and, um, and, and started doing what we had always done. And, uh, when I say several, I'm talking five or six at least. Um, and, um, and so I'm, I, I had to start trying to rebuild and redo and, and rebrand and re, uh, create and let people know that we're back. Because I, I I have customers still yet that um, that that will tell me I bought I bought a building from your dad or or can you come move a building that I bought from your dad you know 20 years ago and so it's it's always been a family kind of a family business but but I I have totally had to rebuild and redo everything I mean I had to rebuild rebuy tools I've added on to the shop I had to clean the shop out you know have weeds and everything all grown up in it and around it and still yet it's still a work in progress but um, 
but it's been a family it's it, it was kind of a family business but it had all went away and I'm having to rebuild it back up gotcha so that property where your shop is is the same location that your dad used and then other people were just in there in between and did you start this did you work in the oil field at all or did you start this like right after high school or college no or I, I um when I graduated from high school um I built built storage buildings my whole life and I said okay. I hate it I'm not doing it I've been forced to do it and and ever since I was a kid yeah. and uh and so I said I'm not going to do it I hate it and <laughs> so uh I went to Votec for welding and uh, when I got out of high school, um, it was in, I graduated in 2009. And as you know, that was in the economy slump. Mm -hmm. and there wasn't no, there wasn't, I mean, there wasn't any jobs at all. Because why in the world would you hire a high school kid when you can uh, hire somebody with way more experience, you know, for the same amount? Right. And, um, and so I, um, I, I found a job work for Cherokee Nation. Uh, because I'm Indian and so I worked for them and I went in um, and was working in their manufacturing plant uh, building uh, wiring harnesses and stuff for government stuff and then and then I went and then I started welding for them and, uh, and then I started machining for them because the contract government as government contracts go the government contract ended they needed somebody to run a machine I said yeah I'll do whatever um, mm -hmm. so that'll be good and, um, and you know, I, I don't know how this ties in everybody else, but this is just me. When, when I first started doing that, um, I prayed and I asked God, I said, God, I want to always be employed. I, I always want to be able to provide uh, for a family and, and, and have means of employment somehow. I don't ever want to be one of these people that can't ever do anything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in that process, I learned how to, I learned how to uh, TIG weld aluminum, high frequency TIG weld aluminum. And, um, and so I got really good at that. And I, and I did that for them until that process ended. And then they put me over on a machine. So I learned how to run a machine. And I did that for five years. And then my dad, who will turn 50 next year, um, had six strokes. And he had to come in off of the oil field. And uh, <clears throat> my wife and I had talked about me going and uh, uh going back in and starting the building business and everything up. And uh, that's another, another point we might want to bring up here just a little bit. I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wouldn't have been for my wife, mm -hmm. but um, she, um, she said, yeah, whatever you think. And so after he had stroke number three, it was the one that really, that really debilitated him. And, uh, and, and, and he got, you know, of course, couldn't work anymore. And he came and I said, well, I'll go and I'll start working there at the shop and uh, try to build that business back up it's been better than I ever could have imagined. That's amazing. I love that story. That's so cool. Your dad is around here. Is he involved in the business or is he like full on retired? Is he okay? Yeah, he, well, um, stroke number one and two, he bounced back from them pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then stroke number three, he lost all use of his left side. And so okay. he don't really, he don't really do much. Like I tried to get him out of the house. We went, um, show pig shopping yesterday Fun. and, uh, and uh, uh he rode around the truck with me oh good well and i'm sure it means so much to him that you're like putting new life back into the place where he used to have a business and it's able to provide for your family like it was able to provide for his it sounds like which is awesome yeah well see that's another thing that where our shop and everything is now bought bought our bought that property and said we always want my mom and dad to have a place to live always want my sisters um if you know god forbid something should happen you know in in, in their relationships or, or anything mm -hmm. i want them to be able to this is always a place they can come back to mm -hmm. and a place for our business and so we bought we bought their property from them just to uh kind of you know help them along and protect them a little bit that's amazing yeah i think um i mean I think it is a lot of like within a lot of small business owners, like especially family businesses is like one of the greatest things that I feel like could come of it, or at least for us as well. Like we talk about it a lot. Like we want to get to that place to where we can help our family, whether it be um, through jobs during their retirement, or like you're saying, if something happens to where at least the business would provide us the means to be able to help them in whatever way that means. So I think that that's really cool that 
it sounds like you've been really blessed and definitely a lot of answered prayers in the sense that you were able to do that and make that happen for them, which is incredible. Okay. So you were married before you started the business, right? Okay. So it's been like a family deal from the get go. And did you meet your wife? Did you guys like go to school together or when did you guys get married and how did you guys meet? Um, we met at church. Um, okay. Let's see. We, we met in uh, July and uh, I might get in trouble for this because I don't remember the exact <laughs> date. But um, We met in July and I went with a friend that was uh, that was preaching uh, at a at a neighboring church. I went with him and um, uh, I, I just jokingly asked him because his girlfriend was coming who they are now married and have kids, which is I said, uh, she ain't gonna bring any friends with her, is she? And uh, he looked at me and he goes, you know, she is bringing her cousin. I said, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm just, just joking. And uh, okay, he said, you might have met her before at church camp or something. And uh, when she got out of the car, I thought she was the most beautiful thing that uh, I'd ever seen. And uh, we started dating and uh, got married in May. Oh, that's incredible. That's so <laughs> cool. So how long have you and guys... That- you were talking about, you know, your wedding day. You were talking about the day you met is the day you don't know. Right. Oh, I know okay. my wedding day. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sense. You're not going to be, I don't think you'll be in that big of trouble then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and now we, we've got, we've got, uh, that was uh, in 2011. Mm-hmm. And uh, now we've got two uh, wonderful little boys, oh, five-year-old and three-year-old. So fun. So fun. And does she work in the business with you or does she stay at home? Like what? Um, she takes care of all the, the tax stuff and everything like that, but she's a uh, registered dental hygienist. Okay. And so um, that was able, while, while we was working on trying to get the business rolling, you know, mm-hmm. because, because of her, because of her working, you know, we was able to, uh, you know, to, to, to keep rolling as far as household expenses and, and stuff. And that's nothing, you know, I, um, I preached uh, at two different weddings. I I was the officiant at two different weddings here this past within the past week, and uh, I thought of a story that I tell. Uh, you know, you've heard of a, a draft horse, like a Clydesdale draft horse or mm-hmm. a Belgian draft horse. Yeah. One horse by itself can pull eight thousand pounds, and uh, if you put two of them together, you would think they would be able to pull sixteen thousand pounds. Right. Well, if you put two of them that's pulling together at the same time, that's been working t- together, they can pull a combined 24,000 pounds. And awesome. so not only they, they can't, they can pull more than double their weight together, right. together. And so, and so working together, we pull together, we, we, we fight together on this business. And, uh, uh, that's what we do. We're a team. We're not, you know, we're not working against each other and, and worried, you know, about money and, and, uh, you know, whether I'm spending all the money and everything, you know, I mean, we, we work and pull together. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. The, you haven't heard it yet, but, um, the episode that's coming out this week, which we're a little late on it, but, um, it's my friend Amanda and her husband owns a business And so it's also like, I mean, her husband is the one who started it and everything, but I mean, as everybody knows, it doesn't really matter who's doing the day to day, the whole family is involved or affected by it or whatever in some way. And she was talking about how it's the same type of thing. Like if she wasn't at home supporting him, like he wouldn't be able to do what he does, which in turn wouldn't be able to like you know, do the things for their family that it does. And it, you're so right with being a family team and how I love that story. I have never heard that before. (laughs) And my grandpa loves draft horses. So that just, I love that story. I'm going to be like, I'm gonna have to memorize those numbers so I can (laughs) use that in the future. I love that. So you brought up that you're a preacher. We haven't talked about that yet. When, how did you get started with that? And have you been doing it for a really long time? Is it something you always knew you wanted to do? Cause you actually are a preacher at a church like every single Sunday. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. We, yeah, we pastor a church. Um, and that is a, um, it's about, it's about an hour and 15 minutes from us. And so, oh, wow. you know, sometimes that's, that's a little bit of a, uh, a, a challenge, uh, but yeah. it's not, I'm not complaining about it one single little bit. Um, yeah, ever since, I, I don't know, ever since I was uh, just young, I guess, um, you know, always kind of felt uh, being pulled in that direction and led in that direction. And uh, I don't want to get, I know uh, 
church people, there's certain terminology a lot of times that we use that nobody else understands. Yeah. Um, and so, and so, yeah, uh, just, just there at, at the local church where I grew up, uh, kind of started out and, um, you know, was, uh, you know, in charge of the youth service and, and everything like that. And then we felt called to go to the church where we are now. And, um, uh, we enjoy it. But my grandpa, my, on my, on my mother's side, pastored a church for over 50 years. Okay. And so it's always, it seems like it's always kind of been in our blood, but, um, you know, like I say, there's different terminology that nobody, that a lot of people wouldn't understand. Right. Right. I was thinking about you the other day because I was thinking about, um, you know, I, I guess just as a new business owner, uh, it's something that always going through my head, how I mix the two. And definitely, mm -hmm. like, I don't want them separate because um, it's definitely a part of who I am and how we live our life. And so, of course, there's always the first conversation and the first decision, which is, like, how much of it is going to be. But I'm more talking about from the behind the scenes, like, as a business owner, how you run your business and how you communicate your business and all those things as um, a person of faith. And so I just... I, I thought about you whenever I was thinking about that because I know that you're a preacher and so obviously, you know, that's a big part of your life. We we joke sometimes that it's like doing a costume change. Yeah. Because on the weekends, see we have church Sunday morning and Sunday night. And so on the weekends or if we're inviting people to church or anything or a funeral or a wedding, we are uh brother Matt and sister Kara, you know, the pastors of the church down here. But right. then during the week we're, you know, when we're not doing that, we're Matt, the guy out there on the highway with the storage building. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and so we, we joke, you know, that it's, it's kind of like doing a costume change sometimes, you know, we go into the phone booth and we come out as, as someone different. Yeah. Even That's though, funny. even though I say that and, and I don't want to get the wrong term that, that during the week, we're not, we're not pastoring. Right. You yeah, know, where you, you understand what I'm saying there. Yeah, you're not, it's not that you're not, it's just that you're doing it in a different way, I guess, yeah. is really yeah. what you're saying. And I think that that's what I'm saying too. From the uh, standpoint of, you know, running your business the Bible way, I know uh, Dave Ramsey talks about that a lot. There's customers sometimes you are never going to please. It doesn't matter what you do. You're never going to please them. You're never going to make them happy. You know, and, and, and I look a lot of times the Bible talks about a soft answer turns away wrath. And there are often times where I've had to rely on that. And just sometimes you just got to eat crow. You just got to be honest. You've got to be upfront sometimes. And don't take me wrong here. Sometimes you have to be over honest mm -hmm. on, on certain subjects, on certain things, you know? Right. And uh, so I just try to just try to run my business uh, the, the best way I know how. Yeah. We always kind of tell people like they'll make comments about like the way we do YouTube or like something that they perceive, perceive as like Austin's character because of the videos or whatever. And we always just say it as like, we just try to run our business and our social media, just like how we live our life. And I feel like if you do that, then it'll like, you have a lot of your answers. It's just, it's really easy to overthink them. I think. Did we, I don't remember if we mentioned the welding, we were talking about it a little bit before we got started. Um, was that, so whenever you restarted the business, um, did you start with the storage buildings and add in the welding? Did you start with the welding? How did that kind of all come about? Yeah. Um, well, we started out with storage buildings and then I thought, man, we should, we, you know, uh, on times that it gets slow, I want something to fill in the gaps. And so, you know, I started gathering up welding equipment and just buying it and swapping around for it and everything. And um, we really don't do a whole lot of it. Sometimes it's kind of hard to compete um, or to be in the welding business because you'll say, well, I'm going to charge so much an hour, uh, you know, a minimum, you know, uh, you know, so much an hour and then so much, a, you know, a minimum time. Right. And, uh, you know, people, the thing is, every, every, everybody has a weld machine they hook up to their dryer vent or to their dryer cord and, yeah. and they won't lowball you on stuff. And so we've stayed with the buildings and if you want some welding, we'll do it, but I'm not doing it for free. Yes. Um, you know, and, and what, I mean, say what you want, but I've got, you know, I've got to put fuel in my truck. 
I've got to put fuel on my weld machine. I've got my welding rods. I've got my grinding disc. And, and y'all know this just mm-hmm. as much or better than I do. And, uh, uh, you know, when people want you to come out and do a $35 job, you know, on the other side of town, no, I can't, I can't afford to do that. And so we just stay, we just, if you want welding done, we'll do it. But if not, um, you know, we'll just stick with the building. Yeah, it's definitely, we've been blessed. That's great. I, I think so. Like, I think so too. It's kind of like one of those things where, um, you know, people, like you're saying, like a lot of people have welders, Austin ran, like as he was building up his rig truck to eventually wanted to go pipeline, he was working in a local shop and he was like doing side work, you know, after work and on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And he struggled with that a, a ton. And he didn't know if it was just like, that's how it was, or like, that's just the audience he fell into, or if it was because he was young, but he struggled with that all the time. And it was so frustrating because he's never been somebody who, you know, like charged too much just to make money or yeah. was like, it was never anything like that. Um, and even then, even what his rate was, it's not like he was making a whole ton and then he would still feel bad and like give people stuff, which that's whenever we were younger and we've learned now. (laughs) And there's a guy around here that has like eventually like he's, he's built up his company now. Um, but I think he struggled with it too. And it takes a long time to find that audience that like values the trade and the work and is willing to pay for it. Cause most people like they don't want to do it. But like you said, they're like, well, technically I do have a welder that I can, <laughs> that I can yeah. do it with. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. well then get after it because I'm not coming for that. You know? Well, for know. example, I, I, I posted, um, something, I don't remember something about doing welding work. A guy called me and said, I, need, I got a fender. I need welded on a trailer. I said, okay, yeah, no problem. And, mm-hmm. and, and I told him, and I know I'm cheaper than everybody else and whatever, but I don't know if people discuss rates much, but I don't care. Um, I told him, I said, $50 an hour, two hour minimum time starts when mm-hmm. I pull out of my shop mm-hmm. and, uh, man, it's only like 10 minutes worth of work. Well, yeah, but you're, I'm, I'm in, I, you know, you're on the other side of Tulsa for me. You mm-hmm. want me to drive all the way over there, use, you know, my cutting torch, my welding rods, my, uh, uh, grinding disc, you know, and then you want to pay me $35 to do it. You know, I've, I've got more fuel than that. Right. And I think people who don't run service-based businesses don't realize that going to do a 30 minute job takes more than 30 minutes. Like you have to make sure that the truck has everything on it. You have to drive there. You have to, then there's invoicing and there's all these things like driving back, not to mention that like, it's a lot, you get more done if you just go somewhere and work for an entire day than you do Mm -hmm. breaking your day up into a bunch of like 30 minute or hour long jobs. And so that's just like how it works. But a lot of people don't understand that. I don't think. Yeah. Well, like, like on on these buildings, people will want to add a ramp after the fact they'll want to ramp on their building. Well, uh, your, your Facebook page or or what are your price sheet says you charge a hundred dollars for a ramp. Yeah. If you order it and we bring the stuff with us and build it when we deliver your building, but I'm not driving all the way back to Katusa. To build you a hundred dollar <laughs> ramp, materials cost eighty five dollars. Exactly, you know, exactly. I mean, I can, maybe I can do it when I'm over there sometime, but I'm not right. driving all the way over there to do it for you. Yeah. And, and and once again, that's that's where a soft answer turns away wrath. You just got to be, just be honest, just just gentle, you know. And most of the time, they understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to just kind of explain it a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys have the building since um, the welding kind of is that way. Um, Is that your main, I mean, that's your bread and butter. That's your main gig, full-time job, like the whole deal, right? And you actually have employees now, right? Did you start with employees? Uh, No, I started out by myself and um, uh, was just working myself to death, working 12, 14 hours a day, um, just doing it all by myself. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one guy said, well, I'll help you if you need some help. And so he worked with me for a little bit. And then that's another thing in construction. Um, hiring people is really hard and retaining them is even harder because, yes. you know, they're, they're in and out and, and gone. And most of the time in construction, you get people that um, like to do things that's illegal. And, uh, and so, uh, 
yeah, he worked with me for a while. And in the last three years, my wife and I was counting up. We've had like 10 people that worked for us. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's hard to, it's hard to retain. Right. So do you keep, like, how many people do you keep on at a time right now? Um, right now we've got two. Okay. I've just got two. But okay. as a matter of fact, one of them told me yesterday that he might be moving to Oklahoma City, which is, you know, 100 miles away from us. Right. <laughs> and so there we go. Staffing problem again. I know. I, if there's one thing I've heard from business owners that like gave me advice whenever we were getting really serious about, you know, starting a business again is that finding help is the hardest part. Yeah. And I actually had a couple of people tell me like, you need to outsource all your shipping and everything because it's going to be really hard to find people. And I didn't want to do that based on a quality standpoint. Like I wasn't willing to let it go. Sure. Um, and, and I still stand by that, but I also am not naive to the fact because of all the advice or really just warnings that I've got from other business owners that staffing is like, the hardest problem like it's the hardest thing to do like especially whenever you get going i think and you can't offer those full-time positions or like the benefits or you know those more i don't know like higher things that you know would would make people stay i guess is what i'm saying um that's always hard too because you're just like trying to hope that they buy into you know the uh the what you're building as much as you do, but nobody's going to do that because they aren't the owner, yeah. right? So yeah, well, I always I, I've asked my dad about this, and my dad told me he said the thing is they're not in it for the same reason you are. Yeah. And uh, every small business owner I come in contact with, I ask them the same three questions. I say, uh, what would you tell yourself twenty years ago when you mm-hmm. was or whenever you was first getting started? Mm-hmm. How many books do you read, and how do you find good employees? And they, and they can answer the first two questions. But number three, I've had more than one say, when you find out, you let me know and I'll go buy you dinner and you can tell me. That's um, crazy. Yeah. A guy we bought a, uh, bought our forklift from, I asked him the same thing. And he said, he said, here's the deal. He said, I've got 20 guys working for me, you know, techs working on stuff, doing whatever. He said, I've got 20 guys working for me. He said, I've got 10 steady ones. He said, and the other 10, he said, they're the ones that you can count on that you can do. He said, and the other 10 folks, he said, it's just a rotating door. That's crazy. And they'll, they'll, they'll work for him for a while and then they'll go work for somebody else and then they'll do their own thing. And then, you know, they can't take it and they come back and work for him. And that's what he told me. He said, he said, good luck. Another guy, another guy from there in town built steel buildings. I asked him and he said, I, he said, I have the same problem. He said, I've, he said, I've probably worked hundreds of guys in the last 30 years. Wow. So he's basically saying like about 50% that walk through, you can count yeah. on to stay. Well, um, he got it. This, this guy that got built still builds his brother is the only one. He said his brother just takes care of it. All of that. He said, but we've had hundreds of them in the last 10 years. It doesn't matter. I found out you can give them rides. You can help them out. You can help them move and do all kinds of stuff. But as soon as somebody offers them a dollar more, or, or they get tired of it, they're out of there. They're out, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, nobody's you, not loyal, not mm-hmm. loyal at all. I, I don't, I've always seen the benefit of like a stable, like job, but more so like a good work environment, you know, and like a great, a great boss. Like it's crazy that some people might leave for a dollar more even though the management might not be as good, but I definitely think that that happens. Yeah. Well, I heard a deal. People don't quit uh, jobs. They quit bosses. Mm -hmm. Um, How many people have you known that do the exact same thing um, at, at 10 different places? Right. You know, because they don't quit the job, they quit the boss. But I've, I've always, um, I've always maintained every time somebody's quit, quit me or something, I've always tried to maintain a good relationship with them. Right. And, um, and, and they will still come back and swing back by the shop and say, Hey, how's things going? You know, just, uh, hadn't talked to you in a while. And, uh, so, so we keep that relationship. As a matter of fact, I got a guy that's working for me now that, uh, this is his second time to work for me. Really? He quit and, and, uh, went and did something else. And a couple of months later, he came back and said, man, I want to go back to work for you. I said, you, you know, cause I try my best to treat you well, you know, we'll go out and eat lunch and we'll, do stuff, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, 
uh, you know, I'll try to treat you as good as I can. Right. Right. Yeah. I think you'll, it's like, you'll find that person and above everything else, like you just have faith that you're doing the business that, that you're supposed to be doing. You're good. You do good business. You're a good boss and that the right people will come like when they're supposed to and whenever you need them type thing. Yeah. I had a boss one time, best boss I ever had. And the only reason I don't, I didn't, you know, I quit working for them is because the company moved. Mm -hmm. They moved too far, too far away from where I could drive to. And uh, he was the best boss I ever had. Taught me stuff, you know, was really, I mean, really, it didn't matter if the uh, the president of the company was standing there talking to him, asking him a question or something. If I walked up and had a question, he would look at the president of the company and say, hold on just a second, turn, look at me. What can I do for you? He cared. He cared about us, and that meant more to me than than anything else. And mm -hmm. uh, and I try to try to pattern myself for that because I've had great bosses, I've had bad bosses, and I try to take the qualities that I like because we're we're all we're not much different, you know, people, you know, and so we like to, um, you know, we like to feel treated good and cared for and and uh, listened to, yeah. listened to. Yeah, he sounds like he was like an employee first type thing. Yeah. Like he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't going to just do something. I think a lot of bosses, like they're worrying about covering their own rear or climbing the ladder and it yeah. definitely shows yeah. in how they manage, you know, yeah. their team. So that's awesome. Did you always know you wanted to, I guess we kind of got into it. You knew you didn't want to or you thought you knew you didn't want to build buildings. Did you always know or have in the back of your mind that you wanted to be a business owner or did the building buildings end up coming first before being a business owner whenever you decided to transition? No, that way? Um, I always wanted to do my own thing. Um, and I told my wife, you know, and, and I think that's something I have a friend now that, um, he wants to do his own thing, but he's not real sure what direction he wants to go. And I struggled with that for a long time because, because I knew I wanted to do my own thing. And so, you know, I, I, and once again, gets back to, gets back to church and stuff. I prayed about it. And what do I need to do? What direction do I need to go? And, and then it seemed like all this just kind of opened up, you know, with my dad getting sick and, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, and so I, you know, we, we kind of just fell back into it. And now I just, I just love it. I mean, I just love building stuff and, and working and stepping back and looking and say, look what we did today, you know, plus, you know, making money is always up there too. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think like it takes a, you know, that's kind of how Austin and I are. Like we both tried to like start businesses right out of high school because we just knew that like ultimately that's the lifestyle that we wanted was like working for ourselves. And it's not that it's less work or less hours because truthfully it's not, No. but it's the lifestyle of just, you know, of just that, of, of making your own schedule and working for yourself. And we love that. And I think it takes, it's a certain breed of person, but I think that more people want, want to do that than do it. And like you say, it's either um, kind of out of like fear or what you're saying your friend is struggling with, which is what we struggled with again before we started industrial tradition is, okay, we want to be a business owner, but what, what, what do we do? Like what's something that matters? You definitely need to have a reason why you started the business that you started. Um, yeah. Cause I think if you just start a business, just, just to do it, like just to own a business, you won't have, um, you won't be able to stick it out type thing. Yeah. And there are days, um, that, um, you know, that I think, yes, this is why I'm self-employed. I love it. I love doing it. I love, you know, and, and, and you, and you'll, you'll really, you'll make good money and, and everything. And then, and then there's, there's days that you're like, this is stupid. I could just go to work for somebody else and not have all this stress and worry. And, you know, and, and I think sometimes it's up and down up and down yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, them, them good days far outweigh them bad days. Yeah, for sure. And like the, the friend I was talking about that I talked to last week who her husband owns a business, she was saying that like the only way that she believes that you can stick it out for the long run is that if you don't get in that headspace, is, is like, is something else, would something else be better? 
because yeah. there's going to be days where, you know, the answer is probably yes, but it's like, what do you want more? What do you want the mm-hmm. most? Um, what type of lifestyle do you want to live? And the fact of the matter is the reality of life, right? Is that it comes with, it comes with both. So but yeah. also working with somebody else comes with like a negative that a sure. lot of us don't like. So it's like, which one do you want more type thing? Sure. Well, um, um being self-employed gets in your blood. It, it gets in your blood. Cause I've seen my dad, even though we, he always, always was working, building storage buildings. He would, uh, you know, it seems like he would get down and get discouraged like that. And, and just, you know, just like this week, say this week, for example, I had three buildings canceled this week and, um, uh, he would, he would go and he'd just quit and he would go get a job and he'd work for two or three weeks or a month. And, uh, and then he would always just come back and well, I'm just going to do my own thing. again. And that's what I told my wife. I said, as soon as I got back in a shop or got back working for somebody else, my phone would just start ringing off the hook and people would, you know, and, and, and I'd be out of there, you know, I mean, I'd look and go, man, I could be making this or that or doing this. And, you know, I'd be out of there. And so you just stick it out and, and like, you know, talking to small business owners, they're all, they all feel the exact same way, yeah. the exact same way. I talked to an old man one time and he told me, he said, he said, well, he said, you'll make a living working for somebody else, but you'll never, you'll never uh, like get rich working, uh, working for somebody else. And really being rich ain't, ain't what we're after, but it's, uh, uh, you know, that's why we do it. It's for more money. All this stress and everything isn't worth it. You know, that's what people, people look at us and say, and, and say, boy, you're making all kinds of money or I could go do that. Well, yeah, you probably could. Once you go buy you a truck and trailer and, uh, insurance and, uh, all your tools and, and hire you a couple guys and, and then, and then you can come and you can make self-employed money, you know, right. which whatever it's worth, some days it's good. Some days, you know, you don't even break even. <laughs> right. But ultimately the reason that, yeah, like you're saying it, it's, it's part for the lifestyle, but also part for that idea that is if you do stick it out and you do work at it, that 10, 20 years from now, you'll be making a better living than what you would have been making, you know, just like working for a different company or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And there's no shame. Some, there's no. no shame at working for a, you know, some people are cut out to be self-employed and some people aren't. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's just, that's just the way it is. And it, and, and it doesn't make one right and one wrong. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, if, if that's what, you know, if that's what you do, do it. No, yeah. don't worry about it. Oh yeah. We agree. Like we have so many people in our family that like, that's what they would prefer to do. Like they want the for sure thing. They want the couple weeks of vacation, like every single yeah. year. Whereas yeah. like, we're like, yeah, we're waiting on vacation for, you know, like, it's just one of the things that we're willing to wait on or quote unquote sacrifice, but it's not, I mean, it's kind of a sacrifice, but really we see it as just like part of the process of like mm-hmm. the bigger plan and the ultimate goal. Um, and so, yeah, it definitely like we need both. Right. And I think there's, you just have to know yourself and know, but if definitely, I think if people are meant to be, um, business owners or self-employees, contractors, however you want to look at it, freelancers, um, you're always going to feel unfulfilled in a job working for somebody else. If yeah. that's like in you, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, when I was working for Cherokee nation, we went and did some training at a, a, a big company. We was, they was trying to get contracts and stuff for them. We went over there and I did some, and they was, I mean, they're a multi-billion dollar company if I, oil field stuff. And there was, a, and they pay good money. Their shops are all air conditioned, climate control, painted floors, uh, you know, free sweet teas all the time and everything. And, uh, uh, there was a guy that worked that was working across the aisle from where I was doing the training. And, uh, uh, I noticed at lunchtime he would go sit and he had this big old van that he set in. And I asked the guy that, uh, that, that was training me. I said, what's a big van? Oh, he does. I, I think it was electrical work or something. He's an electrician. He used to own his own business. And that's all he ever talks about. And, uh, so the longer we did the training, I was there and I looked around the next week. I said, where's old, you know, old, what's his name? Oh, he quit and said he was going back to do his own, to do his own thing. I thought, well, that's kind of crazy, especially working here, you know, great benefits and, and, you know, it couldn't get much better than this, much more of a gravy train job than this Mm -hmm. and uh, making good money. And, and now I understand, 
you know, why he's, I'm out of here. You know, I can't yeah. handle this no more. Yeah. It's, I mean, somebody, like life. you said, somebody could give you the best job in the world, but if it's, yeah. if it's in you, yeah. man, you're never going to feel fulfilled. There's always going to be like a disconnect, a, a little place in your gut that, you know, oh man, I'm not doing the right thing for myself. It, it's, it's a real thing. I believe that wholeheartedly. That's, that's a funny story. But again, that just shows how much true that statement is because like you yeah. said, he was in a gravy train job. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Before we wrap up, I kind of want to, let's do a little plug and really talk about exactly what you do. So it's more storage solutions, correct? Yep. And it is, what do you call, are they sheds, buildings? What's kind of like the terminology that you use for exactly what you make and do? Uh, portable storage buildings. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. And, On a skid uh, and you haul them to yep. location already yep. built yep. and drop them yep. off. Yeah. We can build them on site if we have to, uh, if the person, you know, if we can't get in their yard for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we, yeah, that's what we do. And, and that's, an, maybe that's something else I'd like to kind of point out. Um, don't take on more than you can um, because I have people that ask me, well, do you build pole barns or do you build this or do you, can you build that? I can build it. Yes. But um, I've got a friend that that's what he does full time and you call him and he'll do a good job for you, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we'll just, we, we stick with what we know and we'll let somebody else do the stuff, do what they do. Yeah, you know, I that's, that. uh, we, we build a lot of buildings for, for people, and especially if we're building them on the site, they'll say, wow, y'all did that really fast. Well, that's what we do. Um, you know, and if you're a computer programmer, by all means, go build, go program computers. If you're a pipe welder, please go build pipe. You know, we build storage buildings. You, you weld the pipe, we'll build the storage buildings. You program the computers, we'll do, build the storage buildings. And, uh, you know, sure, you can probably build a storage building by yourself, but it's going to take you, uh, you know, all of your weekends and all of your buddies help. Um, so, so, uh, we'll do, we'll do what we do. You do what we do. And that's how the economy works. Exactly. Yeah. And I love the idea of your, like you're saying your friend that owns the other business, like we're always shouting out other businesses because I, we believe in that exact same thing. Like do what you do well and what you like to do and let somebody else do the other stuff. And people need all sorts of things. Like they need a building you know, they might need a shed and a barn. Okay. There you go. Like they're going to, yeah. same person could technically use both businesses. I love that. I think that that's a great, a great point for both the consumer and other business owners. Um, so you do it all though. You do like, I saw you had dog houses too. And like you did yeah. a, like a deer blind. Yeah. 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 Uh, just, yeah. That, like, <laughs> Well, deer blinds, that's kind of uh, something we do. We do do stuff like that if we have downtime. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah, not your everyday time. kind no, of thing. No, no. But we will. I mean, as a matter of fact, my guys, hopefully right now, they're working on a couple four by sixes, just little buildings. And then um, next week or the week after, we've got to do a 14 by 20. And so, um, yeah, we'll build all different sizes and styles and everything. But we don't get into uh, anything too awful crazy. Yeah. What do people primarily use um, the buildings for? Is it for like little like garden sheds or is it, I mean, I'm sure it's an array of things, but what do you, what do people primarily use them for? Yeah, just, just storage, uh, okay. lawn mowers and stuff. We, if we build great big ones, um, you know, people will live in them. Wow. You know, they'll, fin they'll finish them out into houses. But, um, uh, yeah, mainly just storage because, you know, they've got $2,000 worth of junk sitting in the garage and they've got a $30,000 car sitting in the driveway getting all beat up, you know, by yes. and hell of everything. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. That's so true. Especially, I see that more, I feel like, in Oklahoma than anywhere else. 
like along with like the barn is bigger than the house it's the same idea yeah. but then the yeah. barn is filled full of some junk some tools and then the vehicles and everything else set outside that's yeah. so well i have just if we're if i'm driving through a neighborhood and i see somebody that has their vehicle sitting out if they're out there in the garage or something you know in the garage is just crammed full of stuff i'll stop and give them a business card that's awesome yeah i don't, yeah, awesome. I don't care <laughs> yeah no that's great though we I'm had paid on commission yeah <laughs> but i'm curious is it built from the ground up or is it a like a kit style like how people do the metal buildings oh no no we build it from i i go to the to our lumber yard suppliers and uh and i buy it all and we cut it all and nail it all and do it all awesome yeah. okay that's awesome. Okay. I was always curious, like, cause you know, there's a couple and some of them might be different. Do you know, are some of them done by kits? Like some of the businesses that are, that do similar I'm things? I'm not real you? sure how everybody else does it, but I know we, we, you know, there's, there's different ways, ways you can make it quicker and automated. You can, if you're buying enough lumber, you can buy it, you know, to size already mm -hmm. and everything. But, but um that's another thing we we're, we we try to stay i try to stay real mobile um that if somebody calls me and and they want their building to be bigger or their building to be you know whatever or they want to change it from a building style to a barn style you know i can do that we can you know yeah sure we can yeah we can do whatever you know because you know we we, we try to stay pretty pretty mobile that way yeah and it sounds like custom because like a lot of other places like you go in and there's like whatever setting out front you can basically duplicate that and that's like that's where it quits um yeah. so you're saying like you kind of take um case by case basis order by order and just make it what the customer needs and wants yeah yeah i don't i don't really build and keep a lot of stock because i try to keep my overhead low mm -hmm. um, and i don't want to have a bunch of money tied up just sitting out there waiting and hoping somebody stops by and wants to buy it um right. so we just, I just, uh, yeah, just kind of just build them by order a lot of times. Awesome. And they're all wood with a, with a tin roof. Is that mostly how you have yeah. them done? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. And, uh, we, that's changed a lot when my dad was doing it. Any, if it had wood siding, it had a, a shingle roof or if it okay. had metal siding, it had a metal roof. Okay. And so, and now, you know, that's what my dad goes, why are you building all these wood buildings with a metal roof? So that's what people want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so give them what they want. <laughs> that's funny. I yeah. That. I was going to say like, that's what we would want, but it makes sense with like how the trends used to be, um, yeah. that that would, you know, that that would make more sense. But now people are putting metal roofs on their houses instead of, um, yeah. shingles, you know, so I'm sure. Yeah, it definitely, I think it looks really slick, but we obviously like the metal look. So, yeah. um, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I've got a metal roof on my house. Um, do you? I, yeah. When we, when we first put it on here, I thought, man, I like Hunter green. I want to do a Hunter green roof. And, uh, we went to go order the metal. My wife said, let's look at the color chart. Okay. Well, she said, I really like that red color. And I said, I thought we was going with Hunter green. She said, well, I kind of like that red. So we compromised and got red. <laughs> That was a good compromise, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, can you can you hear like the rain and stuff on it better, or do you even notice from the inside that it's metal? Oh no, tingled? no, no, you can't really hear it. I mean, because we got insulation. Yeah. In the attic. Right. I figured because um, I was always like, oh, I want a tin roof because I want to hear it. But then I was like, really, the only way you'd probably be able to hear it is if you opened a window. Then yeah. of course it would probably sound a little bit louder. Yeah. Well, um, if you want to hear it, you can go out in the shop. That too. <laughs> no insulation, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Oh shoot. That's funny. Well, I know we're out of, out of time. I don't want to hold you up. Thank you so much for doing this today, taking time oh, out of your day to chat with us. Is there any last things that you would like to, to leave people with, whether it be um, just a business owner that's starting out um, or maybe a business owner that has a family with home that's struggling balancing that act what uh, is there anything you would like to leave people with um i'm still trying to find that find that good balance but um i do i talked to a business owner one time we did a job for him i asked him for advice and he said and this has stuck with me he said do not um uh take on a lot of debt 
He said, because it's, it's easy to take on debt when things are going like in, you know, in the winter, it slows down. And uh, in the summer, it's easy to make them payments. But in the winter, the bank is still going to want their money, whether you're working or not, mm -hmm. whether there's ice on the ground, snow on the ground, whether you're working or not, they're still going to want their money. And so uh, I just don't take on a lot of debt. Another, another guy that, uh, that we work with uh, that does a lot of the financing and stuff for us, on, you know, the finances and storage buildings, um, he told me, he said, there's a difference between being an entrepreneur and a businessman. Uh, just because you have the entrepreneurial spirit, you've got to have the business part of it too. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just always stuck with me. And maybe that, you know, maybe that'll help somebody else, you know, yeah. because, you know, it's easy, it's easy to go out and sign up and get them payments. But when in the summertime, when you're just making all kinds of money, but in the winter, when things slow down, the bank's still going to want that money, whether you've got it or not. Right. And you don't want the debt or the bank or whoever to take away um, that business that you're really passionate about. So definitely yeah. there's a way to protect yeah. that. And I think that that's a great one. There's awesome. a book I was reading. I can't remember exactly who it was and, and I'll wrap up. Uh, but they was, uh, um, I can't remember my goodness. I can't remember all of a sudden, but he said I was standing on the top floor of the bank talking to the, the loan officer, the bank president or something. He said, and he said, come here with me. And they walked over to the window and he said, I'll see all these businesses here. He said, we own every one of them businesses. Them people are just running them for us. Oh my God. And so all of the, you know, just taking on, yeah. taking on all that debt. It is way less stress if you ain't got a lot of debt. Yes, I agree. We're trying to get out of debt ourselves. And it's a, you know, it, it's something that we were young and uh, stupid and some people warned us about it and some people didn't, but regardless, we still got into it. Um, but we've definitely learned that like, that's not the lifestyle that we want to, live and so we're working on it and we've done the business like so far without any debt and we've it's been so tempting oh my gosh it's so tempting um because you just want to like you especially whenever you believe in it so much and you want to do it and you want it to grow um yeah. it's like so so tempting but i definitely think that the patience around that is is worth it in the long run. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I know you read a lot of books. We've talked about books before. Uh, is there anything that you're reading, watching, listening to right now that you think everybody should know about? Um, one that I think everybody should read is How to Win Friends and Influence People. I love that one. It should be a required reading before you can graduate high school. I agree. Um, I actually did have to read that whenever I was going to OSU, I believe. That was one that they had us read, um, but I didn't appreciate it then. But whenever I got Audible, in fact, that was my first download. And um, so anyways, I agree. I love that book. And Austin references that book quite a bit. It's kind of a hard listen. Have you listened to it or did you read it? Yeah. Oh, I've listened to it and read it. I've listened to it two or three times. It's kind of a slow listen. Like it, it's, it's not one of those that you can like, you know, plan on like keeping you awake, I think. Yeah. But yeah. it's a wonderful book. I agree. Uh, what is your favorite quote, verse, or saying? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Is, yeah. Uh, one that... Um, uh, a quote is Zig Ziglar quote. It said, money isn't everything, but it's pretty close to oxygen on the got to have it scale. Love that. So that one's always stuck with me. I don't know about a verse. Goodness gracious. I've got, a, I've got a lot of them. I've got a lot of verses. Um, I'm sure you have a ton memorized you? too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, I've got, a, yeah, I've got a lot of verses that I really like, but. Um, Maybe one that, is there one that like you kind of live by in the sense of like, how you make decisions or something like that? Um, yeah, just uh, as always, I know this might sound kind of generic, but the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. I love that. Love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on here today. I really appreciate it. Where can people find you online? Like what's the best place if they want to check out what you do or just join along um, on social? What's the best place? Uh, probably Instagram um, or our Facebook page, More Storage Solutions um, is our Facebook page and our Instagram. So that's awesome. there. And my, my personal page is Matthew, uh, Matthew underscore P Morris. Okay. Underscore P Morris, yeah. okay. And I will link all those in the show notes. That way people can easily okay. 
easily yeah. find them. Again, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know that you're busy. And so I really, really appreciate you chatting with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was good to uh, appreciate you having me. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Industrial Tradition Podcast. I hope this conversation found you right where you are. Join us to celebrate and support one another on the road to life well lived. You can join in more with our community by visiting industrialtradition.com slash subscribe, and we will send you over all the ways you can hang out with us during the week. I'll be back here same time next week for another episode. Now it's time to push back your seat and go live your industrial tradition. Thank you.